Hello and welcome to The Matrixes with Jonathan and Nikki. Today we have a very exciting video. I know I say that every time, but this time it's really very exciting. You say that every time too. No, really now. It's just exciting because today we are talking about states of consciousness. So what states have we been in? What have we experienced and learned over the years? Tithing, whatever. And of course, we can't list everything we've experienced here because we want to discuss each situation a little. Yes, it's a very exciting topic. I have to agree with you. Of course, we cannot list all the states of consciousness that we have experienced. We also leave out the common levels of consciousness, such as lucid dreaming. Dissociation. Yes, so astral travel. Hypnagogic states, we made videos about that anyway? Yes, we've already made a lot of videos about this, about these standard states, I'll say. But what you can achieve with dissociation for other states that are very unknown and that only very few people achieve is what we... would like to talk about today and perhaps this will interest some people. In one of our last videos, we already talked about a state of consciousness. We called the video the shock of the universe. This is truly a state of complete recognition. That's what I would call it now. And we both experienced that. And as I said, made a video about it. You should definitely take a look. Very, very exciting. So I don't think we need to make such a big deal of it anymore. Right, so the shock of the universe, as we once called it, is of course a state that really represents the highest point of expanding consciousness that everyone has to reach and that everyone will reach at some point. Whether in this life or in 50 more lives depends on each individual. Yes, I would say then let's start with the conditions that we both experienced independently of each other, but each of us individually. And then we talk about conditions that each of us has experienced, but the other has not. Yes, and we would like to emphasize at this point that these are not individual or subjective states, but rather states that everyone can experience in the course of expanding consciousness. Or I would even say have to experience it at some point. Yes, I would say that too. These are states that one must enter on one's path to the highest expansion of consciousness. And yes, there are milestones that need to be achieved. And perhaps you will find one or two conditions among those that we are now mentioning where you can say, yes, I know that condition. I've already experienced that. But of course, we also list other conditions where you might say, oh, I haven't experienced that yet. I'm curious when I enter the state at some point, what it feels like and what it's like. And we can assure you, we have experienced some situations where we don't actually know anyone who has reached out to you yet. At least the ones we don't know about, because as we have found out, many people who end up in such states also tend not to talk about it. Which we can definitely understand. Neither have we yet. Yes, we don't actually like to talk about it that much. Actually not. Yes, and that's why we thought at some point, at a certain point, yes, maybe we'll talk about it so that people can get an overall picture. That's a rough idea. Yes, and it's really very exciting, the whole story. So when we were in those conditions, we would have preferred to stay in there, right? In one case, yes. In the other, not so. It depends on the situation. Yes, that's right. There are also states that you have to get into where you can then 
think when can we go again? When can we get out of there again? I don't really feel like spending my whole life here. Well, let's get started. What do we start with first? The state of seeing and knowing. Some people have probably experienced this before. But I have to say that I think fundamentally all states that you enter suddenly convey a completely different feeling. You are no longer in the everyday consciousness. The atmosphere is much more mystical, more scary in a non-horror movie-like way. It's a very old way somehow, as if this condition were thousands of years old. Yes, that's right. Yes, I always had the feeling that it was a condition that I was familiar with. So that's the interesting thing about it. When you get into such a state, you have the inner feeling that I know the state. I've been there before and you can't remember when you were in there. And it all always seems ancient. Yes, ancient. Everyday reality then also seems ancient. Something like, didn't I experience this three and a half million years ago? Similar, right? It seems something like that. And you then identify the everyday condition like this. That you carry around with you every day as a relic or an antique or something. Well, the state of seeing and knowing... Would you like to start? So when I get into the state of inner seeing, as I also like to call it, then I always see where I am, where I am. So I can always identify the entire spiritual. Timeline or path that I am on, I see the goal on the horizon, then I always think, oh my God, what else do I have to achieve? And when I look at it like that, I just think, oh my goodness. Let's go play poker. Somehow you think something like that, then you tend to think. And then I always think, well, there are still a million steps I have to take. And the fact that I have come to the state of inner seeing today is another step in the million steps. The million steps, you really mean going back to the wholeness of the self, i.e. not just leaving the 3D matrix, but all matrices that have ever existed, i.e. the entire path. All the way, yes. And it's not depressing at the moment either. Only a moment. Yes, maybe very briefly, but then somehow the situation is so brilliant, so fascinating that you immediately forget it. Yes, that's right. You somehow enjoy the moment. Once, I'll never forget it. It was really exciting. There I was sitting at Starbucks. Yes? I was sitting at Starbucks and I was dissociating. And then I came into this state, into the state of inner seeing. Then it suddenly clicked in my head. It always clicks, right? Somehow something always clicks and this situation comes all of a sudden. There is no sign or there is no one saying, yes, in three and a half minutes you will go to this state. Nope. You're sitting there thinking nothing bad and then suddenly click your inner state. And I looked around and thought, oh shit. <laughs> suddenly a reality opened up to me that could be described as looking behind the scenes of the matrix. And all the people around me who were sitting at their laptops and working normally, enjoying their coffee, suddenly all became something else. Then you suddenly saw extras who were simply placed in the cafe to make the cafe look like a coffee place. You remember we often went out for Chinese food and we were both always in this state or very often in this state. Yes, it was kind of a place where you came in more often. Yes, that's right. Where you suddenly saw all the extras in the cafe and thought, oh, oh, and then everyone looks at you at once. It was that kind of feeling. 
but they act as if they aren't allowed to look now and continue diligently with what they are doing. Yes, exactly. You really feel like they're all watching you without looking at anyone. And do everything with intention? Yes, everything. They do everything on purpose. Just to give us a show. Yes, exactly. This is really such a small, so it always seems like such a one-man show to me. so that I don't become suspicious, so that I continue to behave the same as the extras. The NPCs, as they say. Yes, it's funny. And as I was sitting in the cafe, the door suddenly opened, then a woman came in and my inner voice said, woman, don't look at the woman in this state. I'm okay. Okay, then I'll look somewhere else, but still, I always looked at it. What does the woman do? And whenever she looked away, of course, I was watching her. But the woman who came in was not a normal person, but a guard. A guardian of the matrix, so to speak. These guards will be sent out when they get the information. Be careful, there is someone in the state of inner seeing. And can roughly say where it is. And then they immediately send a guard there. You've already experienced that, but you can talk about it later. And then I sat there and watched the guard. The guard went to the counter like normal and ordered a coffee, but he looked around <laughs> every three seconds or so. Where is he? Where is the one who is now in the state of inner seeing? And some might ask themselves at this point, why are you talking about it now when they are sending your guard? That's definitely dangerous. No, they only send the guards when you're in that acute condition. If you're back in your everyday life afterwards and talk about it, they won't be interested at all. Because their job is to identify the person who is in the state of inner seeing and somehow ensure that they get out of the state very quickly. That is their only job. They have no other job. What you say afterwards on some video or what you write in some blog article or what you tell friends doesn't interest them at all. No, logical, sure. And of course, I always watched the guard, what she did. And she was always looking, looking for me. I felt it. She was looking for me. And I thought, great, there are guards like this all over the world who will be recalled immediately. As soon as it is registered, there is someone in the state of the inner being who can see the entire matrix. Or maybe the whole matrix is about to be recognized. And that wouldn't be good, because if you recognize the entire matrix, you can, of course, find the exit very quickly. And they don't like that at all. Yes, what can you actually compare it to? It's like a computer game you play. And in a computer game, new adventures are always being discovered to keep you in the game. And of course, if you somehow suddenly find a secret exit and leave the game, the providers of the game who get money or something like that for staying in there for a long time, don't think that's so good. You could perhaps compare it something like this. Yes, and your whole everyday life seems like a game in this state. Suddenly everything is very banal. Everything we do in everyday life seems somehow banal, but it's not that everyday life is banal. Rather, people's interpretation of everyday life is banal and actually doesn't come close to the true view of everyday life. Because in that moment, you somehow realize that everyday life is magical, mystical. It's full of guards and people who are NPCs and all the houses that aren't really real. It's all just a Hollywood town for some film production or something. That's how it feels at that moment. And then you realize that everyday life is a thousand times more than you actually think.
It's just that you miss all of this in a normal everyday state, which is of course what the Matrix architects intended, let's say. They just don't want you to look behind the scenes and see how everything is set up here. So you really feel a bit like how they live in the film. You put on glasses and suddenly, well, what's going on here? What have I overlooked all my life? And there are thousands of things. That's how you feel there. Only then you don't have those sunglasses from the film, but you activate your inner vision. And when your inner eye opens, it takes off. Yes, I have something similar too, but I also have a kind of more active inner vision where, for example, you are in the waking state clearly, and it's not like pineal flashes where information packages with thousands of pieces of information come in, but suddenly I see things for example, when we were on our spaceship before this incarnation, we agreed, I see you standing here and looking at us in your cool suit or like the suit overalls. Or the shining selves or my knowledge of the self that suddenly stands behind me and tells me secret magical things, what the future might look like or whatever. So I just suddenly see things, and sometimes it's also a deep inner knowledge that is somehow revealed at the same time. Now I not only see very active things all the time, but also this inner vision, yes, it is somehow different. You see things and somehow just know them at the same time, so that's why I would describe the state as inner seeing and knowing, I think. You just switch and suddenly you're there in your everyday state and you just know and see things. And that's really exciting. Yes, for me this is also an activated or active inner vision. But I think this is also one of the most common states that you switch into again and again in everyday life. So it's also exciting when you walk through the city and you're in that state. Then you see you are surrounded by thousands of NPCs, i.e., extras and every single one of them knows who you are, that you are a creator being and every single one of them also communicates with each other. And says, be careful, you do this now, you do that, you do that, you do that, so that he doesn't become suspicious. They attach great importance to ensuring that you don't become suspicious and that you get out of the situation as quickly as possible. The only thing that hasn't happened yet is that they don't actively come to you and shake you or something like that because in this state we always had the intuition, don't attract attention, just observe, don't do anything. And that's what we've always done, almost automatically, because the intuition not to do that was always there. Always feel like you're holding yourself back. Other people might say, yes, that borders on paranoia a bit. That's probably how it is. It's a bit like that, but it's not a negative paranoia, but a positive, constructive paranoia, if you really want to look at it psychologically. Because we thought the condition was good. And people who have paranoia don't like the situation. Yes, that's what it looks like. But we think the condition is great. It's brilliant because you see things you wouldn't normally see. So active vision is definitely exciting, and we have experienced it countless times in different situations, right? It likes to switch on from time to time. Yes, it really is a very exciting situation. Or that you suddenly see, as we often see, that everyone is actually under hypnosis. You see people sitting in a cafe, for example, having conversations, drinking their coffee. And you see how they're all completely asleep. They think they're all awake and talking about the most exciting theories and conspiracy things, and you see they're so deeply asleep. You're in such a state of extreme hypnosis. And you yourself, too, I don't want that at all. But you just see it better in others than in yourself. Yes, definitely. So when I talk to people in that condition, I noticed that they were so over-identified with their role. Yes, well, you're out of it. 
you then see that they are so caught up in their role and don't even realize that they are playing this role themselves. Yes, that is really very interesting. You get a double perspective in this situation. There you see the role that is being played and the actor behind it. And the actor behind it is so into the role that he thinks he is the role. And the interesting thing about it is when you talk to the other people and you see that they are completely in their role and the actor who is behind them, who has chosen this role in order to play out his role in this particular current situation, then you have a strong tendency to laugh in some way. Yes, or you always have to laugh somehow because he doesn't even notice that he is completely in his role, completely over-identified, and then you sit there and have to hold back so as not to laugh at him. Or the situation is so funny. So you don't laugh at the person, but simply at the fact that he plays a role all the time, but he is no longer there. Yes, the hypnosis machine is already very active. You can really see how they are so foggy and simple. And this is actually a situation that can be called up quite often these days. And that's a bit of a shame. Sometimes it's a bit annoying. Well, I also met some people who smoked marijuana, for example, and they sometimes got into this state. The condition announces itself in such a way that you have to laugh all the time, but you don't know why. Well, that's what I've observed with people who have just smoked weed or something. Then they suddenly started laughing. They looked at each other and laughed their asses off. And the other people always thought, why is he laughing so stupidly? Because they come close to the situation, the state of inner vision. So you are in the preliminary stage. That's why people laugh so much when they smoke weed. And only a few actually manage to get into that state with the marijuana. So they only come into this preliminary stage, into the forecourt of the state. Yes, because without marijuana, it's just the other way around. You first get into that state and then start laughing. Yes, exactly. The dissociation causes you to get into this state so easily. You really have to smoke a lot of marijuana to get in. <laughs> okay, I got it. Yes, what kind of situation do we still have? Yes, that was a good transition to our next state, namely the sphere of the actors, also very exciting. And with that in mind, see you in the next part. Until the next part. All love.